Recording in progress. I'd like to call the June 4th legislative meeting to order. Everyone please rise from the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, this is one quick announcement. So this June 10th, weather permitting, we'll, we'll, we will be paving Hasbrook Drive. Um, it's going to be done by a contractor, Sullivan County Paving and Construction. If you have any questions about the project, um, please reach out to the highway department or to my office uh, here in Town Hall. Um, see, we have no liaison reports. All the back correspondence. We have two letters from... Um, Chief Brendan Clavesi. The first one is to Detective John Chevalier, Officer Kyle Durain, Officer Joseph S. Brea, Officer Eric Humans, Officer Samuel Camacho. This letter is to inform you that your outstanding display of service to your community on 2524, the above officers were involved in the investigation of the double stabbing that occurred in the hamlet of Woodburn. The investigation from start to finish encompassed an 18-hour period. At the conclusion of the investigation, two suspects were treated for serious injuries and charged with felonies for assault and possession of a weapon. You are commended for the outstanding job you performed. This letter will be placed in your personnel file and read before the town board. Thank you for your dedication to the police department and the community you serve. Sincerely, Brendan Pavese, Chief of Police. The second one was dated May 28, 24, to Sergeant Christopher Cacero, Officer Martin Gonzalez, Officer Stephen Vogler, Officer Colin Garofolo. This letter is to inform you for your outstanding display of service to your community on May 25, 2024. There was a double stabbing that occurred in the hamlet of Woodburn. The investigation from start to finish encompassed an 18-hour period. At the conclusion of the investigation, two suspects were treated for serious injuries and charged with felonies for assault and possession of a weapon. I would like to personally thank you for coming into work to assist your fellow officers in the time of need on the Memorial Day holiday weekend. This letter will be placed in your personnel file and read before the town board. Thank you for your dedication to the police department and the community you serve. Sincerely, Brennan Pavese, Chief of Police. Wonderful well, news, they did an excellent job that night. Fantastic. Okay, so um, at this point we're going to move on to public comments. Uh, I just want to mention if you um, have any questions about anything on our agenda tonight, um, feel free to ask the question. We'll write it down and we'll get to that part of the agenda. I'll attempt to address any questions you have. Um, anyone signed up to speak? Mary Adams. Mary. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for all that you do for our town. It's amazing what it takes to, to run a small town. I have been so impressed. So I have a couple of um, questions about the agenda for tonight. Mainly, um, I'm happy to see that we're getting more staff. Um, the man that runs our semi-HOA uh, in Lock Shelby called the water department to find out if they had a deadline for filling the pool as usual. And the person said, oh, it is so incredibly busy, we uh, don't have the staff to send out the letters to remind everybody he did it anyway, and I'm sure a lot of people will, but it is a concern since quantity of water is an issue. So um, I hope, I did see that you have a code enforcement person, but that's not water department. So I'm just hoping that there's going to be more skilled staff in the water department because it seems like they're really running low, and that's a concern. Um, secondly, uh, the resolution number, let's see, uh, 14, Consolidated Water District Extension, Hasbrook Estates. Uh, I'm happy to hear there's a public hearing so we can all speak to that. 
Um, because again, there's concern of the aggregate effect of all these new um, developments. And um, it's, nobody really comes on my lock shell day, except for maybe you. I've seen you a few times over there, but most people don't come over there. And it's a good thing to come and visit and see the effect of the amount of construction that's already going on, but that's only half of what's been proposed. Uh, traffic, um, it's, anyway, it's quite stunning. So I just want to encourage everyone to take a tour of Lock Sheldrake. Um, and there was one other thing, developers agreement, escrow, that looked good. Um, I was wondering about number 17. I'd like to hear what about the revision of the zoning codes is being considered, seeing as how I believe the zoning codes that are in place right now all stem from the comprehensive plan in 2018. So um, I just had some concern about that. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Next. Um, to you, Benson, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm glad to see that, as Mary said, you're hiring more people. I, I just can't believe these starting salaries. It took me 35 years to make that without overcoming. But I'm, I'm glad, otherwise you're not going to get any decent people. Uh, that, that's just an aside. I just want to remind everybody Thursday, this Thursday, is the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Thank you, veteran. There are a few and far between on World War II veterans left, but if you don't want to thank them, otherwise we couldn't be doing what we're doing. Uh, I had a couple people ask me about something that's going on in code enforcement. It's not mine to make a judgment on, but they're concerned that uh, people were let go. I, that, I don't know any details, and again, not my business, until it's made public. But I just want you to be aware that people are talking out there. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Yeah. Anyone else? Anybody here? Anyone on Zoom? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So then, with that, I'll close the public comment. Um, all right. So first. First item on the agenda has to do with a stipend to our parks director uh, for management of youth grants. Uh, the number of youth grants that we apply for with the county um, that require um, <coughs> us, uh, creating a plan, submitting the paperwork after approval, um, you know, also uh, creating a budget, and then after approval, doing all the, the cleaning and compliance stuff to make sure that we're. Um, working in compliance with the grant in order to get paid. Um, that is time consuming and uh, we don't have anyone dedicated to do that. Um, so we essentially gave it to the uh, uh, parks director to take on, uh, which is uh, definitely adding more and work on his part. So, um, so number one is, do I have a motion to approve a statement to Arnold Selesky in the Parks Department of $5,000 for management of youth grants? Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Alright, so the next, from 2 all the way to 11, these are um, mainly seasonal hires as well as a, a few permanent hires. Um, as, as recommended by their respective department heads. Um, we weren't involved in all of these. Uh, we usually uh, rely on our department heads to do the interviews, the hiring, know their needs, and, um, and we as a board will review their, um, their selections and make the uh, appointment. So number two, motion, we have a motion to approve the employment of Michael Pinella as assistant code officer with a yearly salary of $70,000 effective 6-17-2024. Motion, second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Number three, motion to approve employment of Michael Congelosi as dispatcher with a salary of $25 per hour effective 6-1-2024. Motion, second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. 
Number three, motion to approve employment of Jonathan Rhodes as laborer in the Parks Department, effective with a salary of fifteen seventy-five per hour, as of five thirteen twenty twenty-four. Do I have a motion? motion. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. The motion passes. Number five, motion to approve employment of Charles Stanton as laborer in the Parks Department with a salary of fifteen seventy-five per hour, effective five twenty twenty twenty-four. Do I have a motion? Motion. Have, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Motion passes. Number six, motion to approve employment of Steve Burke as security slash boats in the Parks Department with a salary of eighteen dollars per hour, effective five twenty twenty twenty-four. Motion. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Number seven. Motion to approve employment of Patricia Seletsky as office slash clerk in the Parks Department with a salary of fifteen seventy five per hour, effective 524-2024. Motion. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Number eight. Motion to approve employment of, of Leah Sherwood as office slash clerk in the Parks Department with a salary of fifteen seventy five per hour, effective five twenty six twenty twenty four. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Number nine. Motion to approve the employment of Anthony Santana as utility as utility plant attendant in the water department with a yearly salary of $49,899.20, effective 6-3-2024. Motion. I have a motion second. and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Number 10, motion to approve employment of Brandon Amoya as a utility plant attendant in the water department with a yearly salary of $49,899.20, effective 6-3-2024. Motion. I have a motion. Second. A second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Number 11, motion to approve employment of Chris Cook as utility plant attendant in, in the sewer department with a yearly salary of $49,899.20, effective 5-29-2024. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. All right, uh, number 12, uh, this one is a salary increase for a uh, for our traffic prosecutor, a special prosecutor for traffic. Um, he's currently making $16.03 an hour. Uh, we're looking to bump it up to uh, $19.75, um, considering that he is a, a licensed attorney. Um, I think that's a pretty good deal. Motion. I have a motion. Second. And a second. And I have one recuse. 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 All right, so I have one recuse. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Number 13, motion to approve town board minutes dated 521 2024. Motion. I have a second. motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. <coughs> so, number 14, Town of Fallsburg Consolidated Water District Extension, Hasburg Estates, motion to issue order for public hearing and to accept the map plan and report for filing for 61824 at 6 p.m. Um, I'm Richard, if you can explain this one a little bit, give us some background on this as to why. We're this is an old, this an older project that was started under previous administration. It's been all the way through the planning board, and my understanding is the counts have been taken into consideration. This is the final steps uh, based on various agreements that have been made with the with the applicant. So similar to, I guess Zimmerman and a different other project, that this is a situation where the town had already been working with this uh, developer for many years with the expectation that this water district is, is going to be extended. And even though this board has made it clear to our employees that we're not to treat future developers that way anymore, um, there is a certain obligation that we have based on the verbal and uh, you know, various agreements we've had over many, many years. So would be put into um, potential liability if we did not extend at this point considering that they've already spent so much money to develop the project uh, for us to pull out uh, just because there's a, a change in uh, political will um, would open us up to some liability. So in a sense we are um, 
required to move forward with the public hearing and the other processes. So, do I have a motion to approve the Town of Fallsburg Consolidated Water District Extension Hasbrook Estates motion to issue order for public hearing and to accept the, tab, the map plan and report for filing for 6-18-2024 at 6 p.m.? Motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. The motion passes. Uh, next, motion to approve warrant number 05B24 dated 524-24 in the amount of $413,215.13. Motion. I have a motion second. and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, so the next one is a resolution to um, essentially declare a negative declaration um, for a CEQA uh, for the Never Sink Trail Gap project. This is that, um, that uh, bridge that we're going to build um, to, on both sides of the Never Sink River to be able to connect the rail trail. Um, this is something that's been in the project and works for many, many years at this point. We have, I think, eight different funding sources for various federal and legislative grants to be able to pay for this uh, project. It is moving forward. Um, so one, one step in this process is for the town board to declare that there is no adverse environmental impact by um, putting this bridge over the Never Sink. So do I have a motion to approve the resolution to approve the Never Sink Trail Gap Project secret determination of non-significance? Motion. I have a motion. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Um, number 17, uh, I'm going to have uh, our town attorney explain uh, why this is on our agenda tonight. The, <clears throat> there have been, uh, in the course of administering the zoning code, uh, there have been uh, various technical issues raised with regard to pre existing non conforming uses and variances required. There's been a tremendous uh, increase in the number of variances and applications required by the CBA uh, as a result of certain technical and compliance issues with regard to our zoning code. Uh, so we have to look to make sure it meets current uh, regulatory guidelines as well as certain statutory, I'm sorry, certain case law guidelines that have that have emerged. So that's it's a limited review and it's limited to that area of the code. So it's looking to see if we are in compliance with statutes and case law with regard to certain pre existing non conforming uses uh, that were addressed in the fire zone code, and they would be wholly consistent with the comprehensive plan and law. And any, any zoning code change requires a local law with the local law laid on the desk and also with the public hearing and so on. Uh, so that will that will to be done in the future, and this is a limited engagement of Wayman Hospital and Hanna for that purpose. <coughs> Okay, so then in the end, they're going to be making recommendations to the board. Right? Correct, and that will be under my supervision. Right. Okay, so do I have a motion to approve the resolution authorizing <coughs> retaining of Whiteman, Osterman, and Hannah LLP for <coughs> on the zoning codes? Motion. I have a motion second. and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, number 18, I think you could. Richard, this, <clears throat> this is a situation where Myron Hills uh, project is ready to get certificates of occupancy. There's a punch list of items that were generated by our uh, engineer and building department of things that are required to be done in order to issue a CO. In order to make sure that the developer uh, complies and does that, an escrow is appropriate. In connection with the project, they are the sponsor of a project that has an attorney general filing with the Homeless Association, and the attorney general requires a, an escrow to be held for any un, com, incomplete items that the sponsor is required to complete. So there's two separate and distinct obligations, but they're the exact same actions. So rather than require them to put up an escrow for sponsor purposes for AG and an escrow for the town purposes to ensure uh, completion of the very same items, the practice of the municipality in the past has been to allow a single escrow held by the sponsor in an escrow account, uh, which would be held by the firm, uh, 
be satisfactory both for Attorney General purposes and for the town purposes. The cost of the improvements is identical. The list of improvements is identical. So this is just a, a practice that's been done in the municipality in order to avoid a double escrow for the same items. And the idea is that if they don't meet if their they don't partners, comply, If they don't comply, there is a fund <clears throat> that can be addressed and accessed based on two possible violation uh, procedures. One would be a violation procedure where the building department says you didn't do it, we're going to come and do it, this is the amount. And the amount is established based on estimates provided and, uh, by the applicant and tested by our professionals. That's one enforcement mechanism. The other enforcement mechanism was, you know, you didn't finish the pool, I complained to the Attorney General, and the Attorney General enforced it because they violated or failed in their sponsorship obligation. So it's still the same thing. Same violation, you didn't complete the pool for, for our purposes, you didn't complete the pool, so it can be enforced either way. But the fund is there to make sure that it gets done. And the incentive, of course, is they get it back if they finish it. So that's what it is, because the amount in here is more generous than what they may be able to complete. So it's incentive not to just finish it. You know, to, to finish it, correct. Motion. I have a motion to accept the resolution approving developer's agreement to establish an escrow for Myron Hills. And I have a second as well. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Um, at this point, I will entertain a motion to enter into executive session for the purposes of oh, you sent me this before. litigation and um, litigation ne scheduled. negotiations to acquire property. Right, so uh, enter executive session uh, for current litigation as well as um, to discuss the uh, acquiring of property. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Before you go off the record, if I may, uh, I know it's out of order, but I. I the chief wasn't here when I was speaking before. I just want to thank him for stepping up the presence of the police in the Glen Wild area. It seems to be working. Thank you. Thank you. And thank right. you. And with that, we are adjourned. Thank you for coming out tonight.